Okay. Hi, everybody. I'm Mike Crompton. I'm the interim dean for the University Libraries. And welcome to our first Jackson Society uh, event for this year. Uh, we're kind of, kind of calling this a kickoff because there's a lot going on uh, on campus and with the libraries. And so we're kind of kicking it off tonight and trying to uh, give you guys an update on things that are happening uh, in and around us. So thank you for joining us. Um, Nakia Hoskins, you guys know her. She's our community relations coordinator and our communications uh, person now. And so you'll be hearing more and more from her as we go forward. So this is uh, the things we wanted to talk about tonight, a kind of a rough agenda. I want to uh, give a little nod out to um, uh, Lee Seeger. We'll talk about that in a minute. Talk about what Luther Hodges has done for us, some other miscellaneous announcements. Want to recognize new faculty and staff that's uh, uh, now with the university libraries. We have a couple of young folks to give a couple of testimonials uh, just to, to kind of share with you guys how donor money is used for student success and to help them in their uh, academic career. I um, want to talk about the uh, renovation update. So that today was the kickoff. There's uh, that kickoff word again for the renovation uh, with the designers. So I'll tell you what we're doing there. And then we want to talk about some partnerships with Greensboro Bound and the O'Henry. And then we got a list of uh, events coming up that we want to share. So we got uh, a lot to, to talk about. Um, and I'm going to start by uh, talking about Lee. Uh, if you don't know, Lee passed away in March, and she had been a long-term Friends of the Library uh, member and then also a Jackson Society contributor and led the Jackson Society on, on many um, uh, events and initiatives, especially with uh, special collections. And uh, she passed away rather quickly, very sadly. Uh, but I just wanted to recognize her because this is the first event we've had since she passed. And I just wanted to uh, honor her in that regard. Um, so the other person I wanted to highlight tonight was uh, Luther Hodges. And uh, this is a copy of the ad that's going to run in both our uh, advancement magazine uh, here soon, but also in my state, our state magazine uh, later this year, I think coming out in mid-November. And uh, if you're not familiar with Luther, uh, Luther's been a donor for us uh, for uh, quite a number of years. Uh, the Hodges Reading Room is actually named for his mother, uh, Martha Blakeney Hodges. And uh, so he gave us money way back probably 20 years ago to update it, uh, renovate it, uh, put in new new lighting, furniture, things like that. And he stayed with us. He comes in, checks in on us, uh, talks through uh, things that we're working on and stuff like that. Well, we got to talking to Luther with our Light the Way campaign about doing more. And uh, he indicated that he, he could. And so what we ended up doing was uh, talking to him about uh, giving enough to go with his other uh, donations to become a million dollar donor. And that's what he's done. And we are certainly appreciative of that in so many ways. Um, uh, I went on the photo shoot with the uh, reporter that was kind of writing some stuff up on him. And uh, this picture that he's holding in, in, in this photo uh, is actually on his piano. And that's him and his mother when he was a little boy. So he's got a lot of great stories. Uh, there's a longer article that's going to be accompanying uh, this particular picture. But his uh, his father was governor of North Carolina back in the uh, late 50s, I think into 1960-ish. Um, uh, and his mother, of course, was a first lady. But uh, he uh, he what was really kind of heartwarming for him is that he he indicated that his mother was the inspiration for him and his father. Uh, Luther was a successful businessman on his own. And um, uh, so th this was his way of uh, providing a legacy for her. So he's now a, a million dollar donor, which uh, certainly helps us with the campaign. And we are, like I said, very appreciative of this. And um, it's going to be kind of formally announced at an event on October 12th by the advancement folks. But uh, I was given permission to share this with you guys first. So I just wanted to, to do that. So some other miscellaneous announcements that I just want to share uh, with you guys is um, there have been some uh, changes in the advancement development area. Uh, we are not going to be getting a, an, an assigned gift officer anytime soon. 
They are working on a program, though, with a development experience officer is uh, what they're calling that. And that'll be someone that's reaching out to donors, uh, uh, past and present and future, uh, uh, in, in probably in a social media context, and reaching out and trying to reconnect. And then they'll direct them uh, direct folks to the library who is uh, interested in the library and seeing the library prosper. And so that from there, me and Nakia will go back and, and get in touch with folks. So the uh, the days of having a, a gift officer drive out to houses and stuff like that is probably not going to happen anytime soon. And part of that is just some of the financial situation on campus, but also with the pandemic, less face-to-face -face contact. So just wanted you guys to know about that. I mentioned the Light the Way campaign. I want to indicate, uh, let you guys know what the status of that is. And we're actually uh, in pretty good shape uh, for the university libraries. We're, we're at 73% of our goal. Um, and uh, and the, I think the total campaign is about 67%. So we're ahead of the average. And that's uh, obviously thanks to Luther who made a big difference there. And we still got a couple of years uh, to get the rest of that uh, money. And, and that's one, one reason that we're working the way we are to get people interested and, and involved in the library. And when we talk about the um, renovation, you'll see what the need's gonna be going forward in terms of having um, uh, some money to do some of the uh, activity around uh, what happens with the renovation. I uh, wanted to mention the music library. Uh, we, we had an ongoing music library project that's been going on for quite a few years now. Uh, had some ups and downs, uh, had, had some timing issues because the work couldn't be done during the academic year uh, be, because of this, the disruption that it would cause. But now it's, uh, it's complete. And what, what basically what happened was we converted a couple of study rooms in the lower level of the music library into a recording studio for use by the School of Music. And so this was an appropriate thing to do. It's left us with a nice a revamped study area, a quiet study area for our music school students. So uh, we were happy to be a collaborative partner in that, in that uh, uh, activity. And I wanna mention columns. Um, you should have gotten some notification uh, probably a month or six weeks ago about Holly Stevenson Parrish. She was our communication director of marketing and communications. And she uh, sadly passed away uh, kind of unexpectedly. And so uh, Nakia is actually picking up the Library of Columns publication. Uh, the last one went out, uh, the, lead, the recent one went out last week. And so um, uh, she's doing a great job of uh, kind of keeping up to date on all the different events and activities that the libraries are uh, moving forward with. So I just want to give Nakia a, a hats off for that. Uh, thank you for filling that role. And then we're going to try to keep her uh, uh, vetted with information that will be useful going out. So library columns will continue. That was uh, part of the, uh, the point there. So you can uh, be, look, be on the lookout for it. Wanted to share that we have uh, a new faculty member and a new staff member. Uh, we recently hired Candace Jacobs as our new STEM librarian. Uh, this used to be a science librarian, but because of the, uh, the emphasis on STEM disciplines, um, we changed the title and the job descriptions a little bit, went through a national search and was very fortunate to, um, to uh, find Candace. And so she started a few weeks ago and uh, is already doing some great things. So we are looking forward to that. Uh, we also hired Ryan McDougall as our weekend manager. And this is gonna be a really critical position as we go into the renovation because uh, there'll be a lot of weekend activity. And once the building becomes under construction, it'll be heavily, um, uh, uh, the safety issues will be heavily focused on. And so uh, Ryan comes to us, he used to be a student worker here. He was over at working at A&T and now we brought him back. And so just wanna welcome Candace and Ryan to our university library family. Uh, some upcoming events, and I'm going to break out uh, some in a, in a few minutes with a little bit more detail. But wanted to let everybody know that Founders Day is on, going to be October 6th this year and not the 5th. <clears throat> it, uh, I believe it conflicts with some um, uh, voting activity. But basically, the on Founders Day, they've got 
uh, a big plan for student activities that morning. And in the afternoon, it's going to be kind of a free for all for students, faculty, staff, alumni, uh, everyone to come in and enjoy the enjoy the festivities. So there'll be a variety of games and uh, interactive activities on campus. So I think that's going to be a lot of fun, and we'll try to get some more details out there as we get them. Uh, homecoming's coming up the week after that, and we've got our own Armando Collins coming back uh, to do a book talk. I got a slide coming up on that. Uh, we also are going to be having Spartan Gratitude Day on November 10th, so that's something new. So we're looking forward to seeing what that looks like. And then our traditional Women's Vet Historical Project Luncheon is going to be on Veterans Day of November 11th. So I got a slide coming up on that, too. Um, the, the Special Collections University Archives, I want to let you guys know that they have a fifth, this is their fifth anniversary. So they've been celebrating that all year with a speaker series, present, a set of presentations, and then First Fridays. And so this is uh, what's left uh, from the year. Uh, we've already had some uh, really exciting programs and speakers and very grateful for that. Uh, and they're all online. So if you're if you're able to attend any of these, uh, just let uh, Nakia or Special Collections know and they will be glad to send you a link to join. They're all virtual, but a, a lot of good stuff happening. And this one in December 13th in particular um, is a repeat. Uh, we've done this before, Charles Dickens and his Christmas ghost stories, and that's a, a nice holiday treat. So just wanted to point that out for you guys. I uh, mentioned Armando Collins. He used to be our head of Digital Media Commons. He has uh, taken a position as a tenure track faculty member out in California, but uh, he had uh, uh, published this book and it's about fraternities and sororities. And so we've turned this into our sponsored event for homecoming. And he's coming back to uh, actually host a, a discussion of it. Uh, they've been doing a book club. You see that in the upper right-hand corner. So there's been a lot of active participation with the book club and then we'll bring him in to do a reception and then a conversation about the book and the, and the meaning of the book. So uh, that should be a very interesting presentation. And I mentioned Women Veterans Lunch. Uh, this is the, um, the program is going to be about the Invisible Project. And uh, they're still putting together the details on that. Uh, but that is at lunchtime-ish uh, on November 11th. There'll be more information as they get the details worked out. And if you're interested in coming into that, once again, uh, let Nakia know or let someone from Special Collections know and they will get you signed up. And um, I, I, I know that this is going to be a face-to-face -face luncheon this time. The last couple of years have been virtual. But uh, I'm, and what I don't know for sure is if there's a virtual option. So as we get more information, we'll push that out. But uh, we certainly would like to see, uh, uh, see you enjoy that particular program. They're, they're, it's always a great program. I think last year is the year that we brought in somebody from uh, England uh, as our guest speaker since Beth Ann was doing a research leave over there. And then that was a that was a lot of fun. So we we do have a lot of fun with that. So now I want to present to you guys uh, some student testimonials. So I mentioned before that uh, a lot of money that we get from donors, you know, the point of it is it's not just about furniture or buildings or things like that, but we try to direct as much as we can into student success activities. And uh, these are two in particular that I just wanted to highlight. Um, and uh, they're joined, they've joined us tonight to just talk a few minutes about their projects. But uh, the first one, uh, Luis, uh, he received a uh, University Library Undergraduate Research Award uh, in May uh, for his work on a, on a project. We've been doing this annually. We've got the other winners, including Luis, uh, posted on our website, and his uh, work actually ends up in our institutional repository. But uh, he was kind enough to come in and, and talk a few minutes about what his project was all about. Uh, the, the award is being given for uh, uh, demonstrating the value of the, the university libraries and the resources and the activities that help make students successful. So, um, Luis, could you take a few minutes and talk about your project? Yeah. Hello. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. Can you see me? Yes, sir. <laughs> uh, well, thank you for inviting me. Um, my project was about um, transnational. I'm a historian. Uh, I'm a historian. I'm a history student. Now I'm doing my MA. 
but uh, during my last year in um, UNCG, I was writing my thesis, which was about transnational youth culture and education among um, children and adolescents in Europe's 1930s and 1940s um, fascistic regimes, which you know sounds pretty convoluted, but it's it's an interesting topic. Um, it was really groundbreaking research at the point because basically the perspectives and frameworks that I used hadn't been used before. And the final work will be published uh, by the end of this year. I have been invited to um, several events and talks about it, which has been pretty cool. It's been a pretty cool reception, including uh, one by the Embassy of Germany that happened recently, which was pretty cool. And it helped me a lot, especially in applying to grad school and applying to um, my PhD and MA programs around the country. Uh, I've been accepted in several. I've received some pretty good offers and. Um, some um, grants and, and full rides and that type of thing from UCSD, from um, Texas State University, NYU, Columbia. And so it, it really has, you know, the, it has only been possible because of um, not only the resources, but also uh, grants that I received from the library that helped me a lot. Um, I spent a lot of the time that I, that I spent writing uh, and doing this research, I spent outside of the country and the, uh, the university resources, especially um, the ones that I, that I could access from uh, abroad and the money that I received helped me a lot. Um, it was high pandemic, high COVID pandemic. You couldn't travel much. And so uh, access was really a problem and um, it was really facilitated by these resources. So thank you. Well, well thank you and congratulations on your continued success. Um, what, what I wrote in terms of your entry was wonderful, and, and it, was, it was really intriguing to hear how uh, you did, um, uh, were able to, as a UNCG student, access those resources uh, from uh, uh, Brazil, I think it was, and, um, uh, but also had uh, some of the materials that, you know, were you able to take with you and things like that. So uh, that's, that's what we try to do. We try to make sure that you, you have what you need to be successful. So, uh, like I said, thank you, and and uh, you're going to go far, you know. So we'll keep an eye on you. <laughs> thank so you, thank you, and thank you again for the opportunity to talk. Yes, sir. Thank you. Um, I also would like to um, uh, introduce Shelby Webb. Um, Shelby is um, she's our seventh diversity resident, and uh, she, uh, we're part of the ACRL Diversity Alliance and have been for uh, quite a while. Uh, but Shelby special in, a, in a several different ways. Um, she uh, is our first um, diversity resident who actually graduated from our library and information science program. And um, I actually shared the stage with her when I gave a commencement address and she was giving the student uh, leader testimonial in that uh, ceremony. Um, so, but we were very happy to have her here. She also worked in uh, special collections as a student when she was here. So, uh, Shelby, could you explain or expand upon your experiences a little bit? Sure. Well, good evening. As Mike said, I'm Shelby Webb, and thank you for hearing my testimony today. Um, my UNCG career started as a student in the MLIS program, which I chose for its emphasis on practice while educating. So not only did we discuss real life librarianship with seasoned professionals and newcomers like myself, but we would carry these out in real life librarianship exercises, whether uh, cataloging something crazily obscure in our professor's um, history, or even just going out in the real world and doing our own research, doing our own reference interviews and like reporting back. And also I chose this program because I found much support and encouragement for interning, which I did uh, for the special collections and archives here. And before that, I was UNCG's communication department's digital assets management assistant. And I'm also lucky to have been a graduate assistant where I got to help with research, departmental events, and contribute to a professor's article in which I received co-authorship. And these studies and experiences mine afforded me the great opportunity of interning at Plymouth Patuxent Museum last summer as an archives assistant. And so after 
that job and a summer of job hunting and interviews, I was fortunate to land a residency position here. And as a resident, I get to bounce around different departments. And when I started in late January, the first department I bounced to was ROI, which is Reference Outreach and Instruction. During my time there, I got to shadow my librarians at the reference desk and in the classroom. And I co-taught an information literacy session and eventually gave my own solo instruction session. I also staffed the desk tending to information needs in person and through web chat. And thankfully, the whole ROI crew was there on the chat whenever I had questions. They were also a great guiding force during outreach activities I participated in, like staffing tables and giving a tour for SOAR, which is a student orientation event. And I also got help. Uh, I also got to help plan and host the astrology event during Rock and Welcome Week, which was a lesson in what happens when more people than you anticipated show up <laughs> to an event. <laughs> it's, like, it's a great problem to have. But uh, the committees I've served um, on have also been an eye-opening experience as part of the undergrad research award committee, like Mike said earlier, it was a joy just to explore the work of our community and recognize their extraordinary efforts as Luis just said like two seconds ago. And plus it was an interesting group activity to experience a shakeup in the review process that led to us coming together to do something different because uh, Luis and the other winner, like both of them had extraordinary work and had done some extraordinary effort into the research. So like we just had to recognize both of them. And that was great that we were able to do that. Yeah, it yeah. was. Yeah. And likewise, being on the search committee for the STEM librarian was a different experience because I got to see the hiring process from the other side. And I got to see how the whole UL team came together to get to know, host, and honestly discuss the candidates. Um, and I learned this also applied in a more personal fashion when uh, my dad passed away in early March and all of Jackson supported me when I took time off. And then when I came back, and that time was a bit hectic with applying to many conferences with fast approaching deadlines, but my colleagues were gracious to grant me letters of recommendation, advice, and whatever I needed to pursue professional development. And this included the Minnesota Leadership Institute I attended last, uh, sorry, late July and have continued with virtual sessions for the past few weeks. It was a great chance to connect with early career librarians like myself and see how our uh, POC-ness translates into our goals and experiences in the field. And the chance to create a cohort just felt good from a networking point of view, as well as a social standpoint. Plus being able to reflect on communication styles and behavior that determines how like you're able to lead just further solidifies my standing in my career. Uh, well, also wanted to add that since August, I've been in the special collections in university archives, but I've been, I've retained a few duties from ROI, like my role as liaison librarian for the African-American and African diaspora department. I do research consultations and work with the department to meet their information needs. And at the same time, I meet with school staff about the goings on in that department and for a controlled vocabulary project we're working on. I also have helped to uh, set up and shadow instruction sessions using the archival materials. Um, and I'm planning on starting an indexing project after I get my JCLC poster presentation and panel discussion out of the way here's hoping uh, it's not canceled. Uh, but JCLC will be my fourth professional development activity this year, following ALA, uh, TALA, the Triad Academic Librarian Association, and the Minnesota Institute. Thank you. And as you can see, Shelby's been very active, and we were very fortunate and proud to, to have her here as our resident. So uh, she was a student and now um, and involved in a lot of UNCG activities, and now she's our uh, resident, and which, which is a full librarian. Uh, I, I wanted to make that clear. Our residents are full librarians, and we try to, we're trying to incorporate them into the uh, the professional vernacular uh, moving forward. So, um, so uh, thank you, Shelby. And yes, Shelby well, mentioned. I was uh, well done, both Louise and Shelby. Thank you. Oh, thanks, Emily. Thank you. 
Uh, and Shelby mentioned the other award, and I just wanted to briefly say we had an extra donor uh, this year that gave us uh, an extra stipend of $500 uh, for a second award. So we did award a second undergraduate research award, and that went to uh, Krista Savage-White, and she did a podcast actually using our digital media commons resources called Finding the North Star. And so I just that's worth mentioning because uh, she did a great job. And that's back to what Shelby was saying. It was hard to pick uh, a single winner. And all uh, you know, all the uh, submissions for that were really outstanding. And so um, we're hoping to be able to do more and more of that as we go forward. So I just wanted to mention that. So, uh, and, and the other thing, we are you know, getting Shelby out and doing these professional conferences. The JCLC one that she mentioned is in St. Pete, Florida, which uh, the hurricane just kind of went into shore there uh, earlier today. So that's, that's that's why we're waiting to see what's gonna happen. But um, uh, she's, she's doing a great job representing us, but also that opportunity to get her out there is comes from funding that uh, uh, you know folks help us with. So uh, we, we appreciate that. So, um, so speaking of funding, I did want to uh, uh, bring this up and, and ask Nakia to talk it through a little bit more, but uh, there was a lot of calls for uh, our friends of the library organization to come back or what happened to it or, or just some confusion uh, because it got uh, disbanded or put on hiatus or however it was described a few years ago. And um, so we, we didn't really just want to let things go completely. But with the changes in advancement and development here on campus and um, with, with kind of where we're headed with the things we need to do for student success and for renovation projects, um, we've developed this giving and engagement opportunities. And so, uh, Nikia, if you could talk through this a little bit just to, to uh, uh, give an idea what it's all about. Absolutely. Thank you. So to even find this page, if you go to the UNCG library website, if you scroll down to the bottom right, it'll say give now or give to the libraries. And this landing page is what you'll be directed to. Um, and this is what we call our new affinity groups and um, our giving engagement levels. Basically, we are very much so aware that we have a lot of community that we serve and in return wants to support us. There's a lot of stakeholders that we need and want to engage with. So we've opened opened up these affinity levels to cover every base. We have from student philanthropists all the way up to sponsors for some of the specific events that Mike laid out before, and even to very um, elite and special circles. We say elite in the way that we definitely want to recognize those who um, want to support the libraries as far as being like Jackson Society, being attuned to what's going on and really be engaged in the decision making that is happening here. So with our affinity levels, we are including students, parents. We want to recognize that we do have campus faculty and staff who give regularly to the library. And so with these affinity levels, not only are we recognizing these individuals, but there is a benefit to it, right? We're creating engagement in relationship dynamics here. Um, we've introduced not only students and parents, but also emerging professionals. Um, these are students who have graduated um, from the university, any university within the last 10 years, who recognize the um, how important libraries are, at least in their collegiate career, and want to make sure that these opportunities of success for students are still there. Um, and so basically, this is our attempt, right, to as we come into, you know, the library of the future to make sure that we are engaging with everyone who, like us, believe that at least the library here on UNCG campus hopes to create very bright futures for our students in our community. And so as you begin to, to give, you'll fall into one of these affinity groups. And then, as I said before, there are relationship dynamics and benefits and a ways to engage, to engage beyond just, you know, a thank you for your donation, which we are definitely grateful for. But it's going to be events like this, both both virtual and in person, just to continue to get to know each other, to can continue to get to know the initiative the libraries are putting forth to get to know students like we did tonight who are benefiting from the support of donors like you. So we are definitely excited. Um, it is new for us. Um, we're moving into a lot of new things, but like anything new, we're going to be patient um, and we're we're going to, to learn a lot in the process, but definitely grateful to have you um, with us along the way as we, again, just garner more support for the library because we 
are definitely the hub and the heart of this campus. And I think everyone at UNCG and in Greensboro sees that. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Nakia. And so there's that word kickoff again, because you guys <laughs> really are the first first to see um, uh, this is this is really right off the web page. So this you guys are the first to kind of see this all put together. And those uh, uh, levels are hot links that'll take you into the benefits of each level and uh, and talk that through. But we're excited about what's coming. And so this is going to help us make it happen um, for our students, for our faculty, staff, and for the growth of the library on campus. So, so thank you. Uh, speaking of growth, I just want to remind everybody, I mentioned uh, that we are at 73% of our campaign goal. I just want to remind everybody of our uh, campaign priorities, uh, which is uh, promoting student success, which you saw a couple of good examples of tonight. Uh, developing unique resources, and uh, the, the, this is, goes beyond just, you know, special collections and um, projects like Women's Vets. Uh, we also have got, uh, we've advanced or enhanced our, our equipment and technology down in the di digital media commons, for example, with additional 3D printing and poster printing and things like that. So uh, uh, the resources uh, cover a wide range these days. Um, uh, we're also trying to advance our leadership in EDI. We traditionally have been. Uh, our diversity resident program is a good example, but there are other ways that we can help promote uh, uh, DEI activities uh, both in the libraries, in the profession and on campus. So we're continuing to explore options and, and programming for that. And then the investment in, in facilities is also going to be something uh, that's significant going forward uh, as we get further and further into this renovation process and determine more and more what the needs are going to be. Um, which, uh, to start telling you a little bit more about that, um, there was a, uh, um, a long, I guess, a long history of us needing a renovation. And if you've been around a while, you might have heard this come up over and over again. And uh, we did a master space plan back in 2019 and uh, took that to the chancellor. The chancellor made it our camp uh, the campus priority in terms of a new building. Um, but then the uh, pandemic hit, the state budgets froze up for a little bit. And uh, once it got going again, uh, the project was uh, submitted as $120 million based on this space study, and we only got 81. So what we've been doing this year is um, going through a selection process and a contract process to get designers and contractors. And so we have come up with uh, LS3P out of Raleigh as our primary con uh, designer. And then Shepley Bullfinch is their consulting designer that works with them and they have an office in Durham, uh, but they're out of uh, uh, Boston. Uh, they have special um, uh, experience with academic libraries. So uh, today was the kickoff with them. So that's where that term kickoff keeps coming back up. Uh, and then the scan, the Scansa that's down here at the bottom, that is the construction company that is a part of our construction manager at risk program, which means they're going to be uh, in, uh, embedded in part of the design process to make sure that things are done in a cost effective and uh, way and stays on budget. So that was our kickoff today. Uh, and just to give you a, an idea of what happened today and um, the rest of this week and into next week. Um, we um, we had uh, student engagement sessions today, and what that was, they moved it around from the dining hall uh, over to Elliott Center, and then they ended up today here in Jackson. And basically, they uh, they had uh, uh, boards, talking boards of images and questions, just engaging students about how they use the library, what works for them currently, what they what did they wish we had differently, that kind of stuff. And they've gotten a lot of great feedback. Uh, I talked to them just before we started this program. Uh, they've also got a survey that they're uh, passing out QR codes for, and they said the response today has been uh, pretty significant uh, to the survey responses. So um, that was part of what we did today. The other thing is we started our visioning sessions, and, and this is where the designers um, uh, representing both of these groups are meeting with select groups. Uh, today was uh, the academic deans, the provost, some student success folks uh, talking through 
uh, their experience and what they've heard in other academic libraries and asking them what what the what the perception is here in terms of how we're doing and what we need. Now, I'll tell you anecdotally that what I heard was actually very gratifying that people overall are satisfied with us and our services, but we do, do need better spaces. And that's what this is all about. So I was happy to, to hear it take that direction. Um, tomorrow, we're actually giving a tour. They've been pouring over all this um, paperwork from previous mini renovations, the space study itself, facility reports. And so we're gonna actually do, tour the whole library and, and kind of put, um, uh, uh, put the context to some of the stuff they've been reading. They'll be meeting with the uh, campus facilities people. They're calling, they're calling this a utilities review to talk about some of the infrastructure issues and where some of the emphasis needs to be placed uh, in terms of uh, upgrading facility uh, types of things. And um, and then next week, they're actually meeting with the library departments um, in, in the kind of a visioning slash programming uh, format. And so um, they'll, they'll kind of step back, regroup with that, and then come back again uh, mid-October to do another series of something similar based on what they've learned. The, uh, the other thing that happens tomorrow is there is a design oversight committee that's been established by campus. And uh, on that committee are representatives from all across the campus. And so that'll be our kickoff meeting tomorrow afternoon with that group and uh, to talk through what, what they've learned so far and what they're hoping to learn going forward. So um, it's exciting. I think that we're finally after this point. I've been here for 15 years and uh, all I've heard for 15 years is we need a renovation. Well, here it is. We, we, we kicking it off. So we're going to have a good time with it. Uh, here's our bigger picture timeline, just so you guys know. So uh, there's September 22 right now. We kicked off with our designers. Um, that's going to run us into spring of 23. So it's going to be a lot of information gathering, a lot of visioning. Um, and and they come back with uh, questions. You know, I heard this over here and that over there. Help us figure out uh, what it really needs to be. Um, so by the time we get to next fall, so another year from now, they'll be ready to put together some concept designs and, uh, and start working on construction document development. And what they, the way that process typically works is they will put together these concept ideas, bring it back in and pull groups back together and say, okay, this is what we're looking at based on what we heard. Uh, and also in this case, based on the money that we have available. And then they'll uh, get feedback on that, let people weigh in on that, and then go back to the drawing board and do that several different times. You, you, you end up seeing that in several different cycles. And then by summer of um, 24, so I know that sounds like a long way away, but it, it'll come quickly. Uh, that's when they're expecting to start construction. And we still don't know at this point exactly what the scope's gonna look like with the 2019 master space plan we talked about an addition or an expansion. And at this point in time with the money, we don't know if it will be, how big it will be or if it will be. Uh, there's still a lot of things to figure out between now and then, but uh, whatever it's gonna look like, uh, we're gonna start work on that on in the summer of 24. Uh, the building is gonna remain open so part of this visioning is how we shift um, uh, resources and people around to continue to provide services and resources for our students and faculty uh, while this building is being renovated. And that's expected to take three years. So it states very clearly in their contracts that uh, the plan is, uh, is to have the building uh, finished and reopened completely by fall of 27 for the, for the uh, incoming uh, uh, semester, uh, the incoming class into the fall of 27. So uh, five years from now, uh, we should be sitting here at a nice new uh, life safety, um, visually enhanced building. And uh, between now and then, we'll just, we'll keep you posted on what it's gonna look like. There uh, is expected to be some donor sessions uh, later in the year or beginning of the year uh, next year. So uh, we're not leaving out you guys. Um, but we just haven't got those those details worked out yet. But um, we, we've kicked it off. So that's going to be the exciting part. Looking forward to it. A couple other things to share. Uh, we um, Our partnership 
important to us because of the connection to the community. So uh, we have started a partnership, and this is kind of a, 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 in a trial right now, but with the O. Henry magazine, uh, they've started an author series. So we are a uh, partner or a sponsor in this first uh, uh, author of the series. And you can see that the, this program is coming up on November the 3rd. And uh, we got, as part of our partnership, we do have some free tickets. So what we're going to do is uh, who, whoever is actually a current Jackson Society member as of October 14th, uh, names will go in a hat and we'll draw out some tickets to this particular event and then uh, call people and, and um, invite them down, invite them into this, uh, this event. And if this works well and people appreciate this kind of activity, we uh, will continue to su support this series going forward. The other partnership that we like to talk about is our partnership with Greensboro Bound. And um, if you uh, attended or, or are aware of our sponsorship of um, our tolls in May, um, uh, it was a tremendous success. We had 400 people in the Cone Ballroom. We had another 200 online. He was very entertaining. Everybody was very happy. Uh, so we're hoping to, to repeat that success going forward. Uh, we like our partnership with Greensboro Bound. Uh, we like the fact that they are doing something like that in Greensboro. So being a part of that is, is significant. Uh, our positioning of uh, Thursday night is uh, one, I'm going to use that word again, kick off. It, it helps us kick off uh, Greensboro Bound for that weekend. So we've asked to keep that position. We'll see what happens. But we're also starting to look in, in terms of who we would like to sponsor to bring in next week or next year. So if you have any ideas, uh, let us know. If there's someone in particular that you'd like to see come to Greensboro, let me or Nikia know, and we will pass that along uh, as we're working on uh, vetting out uh, possibilities and, and making decisions. So I think that's all I really wanted to talk through uh, tonight. Um, and if you're listening to this recording and, and uh, have any questions, please reach out to us. But um, uh, Emily, I'm gonna ask you directly, do you have any questions from anything that I talked about? No, I don't have any questions, but it was um, very interesting to hear how um, how the the renovations will will proceed. And, I, and I, I know you guys have waited a long time for this and the students, and it's just definitely needed. And um, it's exciting to, that it's going forward now. Yeah, absolutely. Well, we're excited for it. And it's going to be a lot of work and it's all, it's not all going to be pleasant. I think we know that, but it'll be worth it for the, uh, in the end, and it'd be worth it for the students that continue to come to UNCG. Yes, yeah, so the library is the heart of the campus. Yes, ma'am, it is. And we're proud of it. <laughs> So uh, if you are listening to the recording, please reach out to me or Nakia if you have any questions. We we would like to do this again before the end of the year, just to have these updates. So um, Nakia, do you want to uh, like send out a poll and maybe look at something uh, uh, after Thanksgiving, but before it gets too far into uh, the holiday season, maybe first week of December or something like that? We'll see what, what sets with people. And, uh, and set something like this up again to provide further updates. Most, I think I was on mute, but yes, most definitely, <laughs> definitely want to make sure that um, we're including everyone because as we've seen, we have good news to share. Absolutely. All right, All right I'm going to stop recording. Thanks to you both for your time.